Hey guys, welcome to this week's Hot or Not Thursday. I have the entire newly revamped Kardashian range to play with. We have lip items, contour items, face items, concealer foundation, the whole new shebang that just relaunched. Now when I say relaunched, they have had Kardashian beauty available at Ulta and the drugstore and we've seen it and I've actually reviewed some of it on my channel I think like three or four years ago. So this is not brand brand new, but the revamp is all the packaging is different. It looked really cool online, so I ordered it, got it. I'm excited to share my thoughts. My thoughts are not that positive. Um, so if you don't like the kind of video where someone really gives you the nitty gritty, then this is not gonna be the one for you. We're gonna go through the pros and cons and why it didn't work out for me. I am wearing a lot of this makeup right now and I wanna show you how it applies. Looking at my makeup, I do enjoy aspects of my makeup today, but I don't enjoy how it applied, how hard I had to work to blend, and how it feels right now. It just feels heavy. That's the best way I can describe it. My face makeup normally feels very light and fresh, and I can actually feel this makeup on my face. So let's go through everything kind of in order of application. So we'll start with the foundations. They are $12.99. There are eight different shades. I have the shade 30 soft beige, and I also have the shade 40 natural beige. Now I enjoy that these are nice jars and you get a pump. You guys know I'm a big fan of a pump on a foundation. To me, it makes a big difference keeping the product really fresh. So I appreciate the packaging on this. I think it's really pretty and sleek and it's called the No Apologies Liquid Makeup. I don't like this one bit. I do not like this foundation. It did not blend once I finally was able to blend it. If there were areas that needed just like a touch a little touch more blending, it would move everywhere. And now that it has set on my face, it is a very matte finish, but it just, I can feel it. And do you know when a product makes you feel like you're gonna break out? That's how I feel right now. I just, I feel a little bit of an itching sensation. That might just be me and my experience. You guys are welcome to leave comments below if you've tried this out. Now I've only used this twice, but I'm not gonna continue using it just because I already know I don't like the way it makes my skin look, I don't like the coverage, I don't like how it blends, and it makes me feel itchy and like I'm going to break out. So this was just a no. My very favorite drugstore foundation is the Milani Conceal and Perfect, and that one is beautiful. It wears all day, people stop me, they ask me, what are you wearing on your face? And that is a perfect option at the drugstore if you are looking for a good foundation. I'm just gonna steer you in the direction of things that I super, super recommend. Guys, I'm being so super honest. I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. These are just my opinions, but I know that when a brand comes out and everything looks like beautiful and new and fun, I myself get super sucked in and excited and trying these products out, I just, I'm not impressed. These products are not expensive, but they're not wet and wild. They're more expensive than Maybelline. They're kind of up there in my opinion for drugstore priced items. So I got two of the No Apologies concealer. I got light and medium. Light has a nice yellow undertone to it. The problem with this is you put it on and when you go to blend it out, and I did use my typical routine of using a beauty blender, I went to blend it out and it leaves patches of open exposed skin. Where it moves around, it doesn't press into the skin. It wants to kind of patch and bunch up and move around. I do not like that. Maybelline, in my opinion, for drugstore concealers gets it done perfectly every single time. I was trying to demonstrate the makeup for this video and I was like, I can make this work, I can make this work. I wanna show them exactly what it looks like. And then I was like, I'm gonna hate everything else on my face. So I went in with my Age Rewind and just patted this on top and it's like a magic eraser that does not look heavy whatsoever and is crazy affordable. So I don't think the concealers are great. Just, I don't. I also don't think the contour case, contour cream is good either. This is just really slimy, sticky, and I don't really understand. This darker one here is going to be for contouring, but it is so slick and it does not dry down. I did use this to contour my nose, but I can see right up in here, it's just kind of peeking through. It didn't want to blend. Um, I tried to go down the center of the nose with the lighter yellow shade. And again, it just wants to move around quite a bit. You immediately will get some good coverage, but you go to blend it in 
and it just looks very uneven. So I'm not a fan of that. I, this is like the most negative review ever. I'm really sorry, you guys. I, I feel bad. I feel like the Kardashians are going to come for me. Um, okay, moving on to these face palettes. They brought out three. I did purchase all three of them. I got the No Apologies Face Kit in Work It. I got Own It and Slay It. So going in, you can see even just looking at the palette itself, how very powdery it is. I'm going to go in with like just a fluffy brush and demonstrate here just how powdery that is. Are we seeing that? I'm just dabbing it and it's getting everywhere. These are just not very well made. They're not well made whatsoever. Can you make them work? Sure, you can make anything work. An artist can play with a knockoff brand of Crayolas and create something beautiful 100%, but is it ideal? No, this is not ideal. The blushes are horrific in the sense that you go to put them on and they do not blend. I had to use two different blush brushes to get everything kind of blended out and I was not using cheap brushes. I was using my Bobbi Brown that always picks up the perfect amount and usually gives me this perfect rosy blush no matter what product I am using, whether it is drugstore or high end. Then I had to go in with an IT Cosmetics brush that had nothing on it to really kind of get everything at least wearable. So what I'm wearing on my face right now is wearable, but it's not my ideal. I can see skin poking through here, here. It's just, it's exaggerating my pores. It's blotchy through here. It is much more noticeable in real life. You know, keep in mind, I do have lights here, a ring light. It makes everything look really uniform and pretty, but in real life, it's not that cute. Then I wanna mention the highlighters that you get. They are very pigmented. I actually would recommend these more as eyeshadows than I would a face highlighter. Now, what is on my face right now is from this kit, and it is extremely highlighty. You're seeing a lot of reflection, but it's also exaggerating every little bit of texture that I have on my face. When I use intense highlighters, I still like them to have a smooth, buttery appearance on the skin and you can get that done. These are just too stiff to begin with where they feel kind of like, um, and do we see what's happening with the pan? They feel kind of like the Morphe um, eyeshadows have that kind of really intense, intense, almost wet feeling, wet powdery feeling. I could make it look great on the eyes, but on the face, it is just not gonna pick up on your brush the way that you want it to and it's just, I don't like it. I don't like it, I think it's too much, I think it's too thick, I think it's too hard pressed in the pan to be able to pick up on a highlighter brush and really give you that beautiful glow that you're probably after. This looks more of like a stripe of highlight that's just going to exaggerate your pores. So that's how I feel about the blushes and highlighters in all three of the face kits. Now going through the shadows, there are a few shadows in here that are beautiful. I don't know if it's worth it to you to purchase a full palette like this for a few beautiful shades. The green shade in the Slay It kit, which is what I have all over my lid, I would totally wear this again. It blended on the lid beautifully. I have no complaints about it whatsoever. The other shade in there, that dark plum, I used it on the outer edge of the eye. That one is gorgeous as well. This kind of deeper, kind of purple navy color next door is amazing. So the shadows themselves are really pretty when they're metallic. The more matte ones tend to be very, very powdery, but they're not horrible. Um, you just have to make sure that you use such a light touch and kick off the excess. Now, if we go into the Own It kit, the highlighter is, is going to do the same thing. It's very rough, it's very thick. I mean, okay, just can we look at the blush for two seconds? This is the blush in there. You're gonna have some real, you're gonna have some real issues blending this out. It is near impossible to pick up just like a dab evenly and put it on your cheek. It is way too intense, way too pigmented. All right, so the purple in that one is really uneven. It's not very good. It's not the same as that green. So don't get too excited if you're like, oh, the shadow's great. Um, the purple one, I bet that's awesome. It's kind of patchy. The other shades in this one are just kind of mediocre. I'm not, I just, I don't like this one altogether. There's nothing in here that I enjoy. Again, this is the Own It kit. 
I did want to share with you guys how these products performed on my face and do drop-ins. I've been doing that a lot for Hot or Not, and you guys seem to really enjoy that. But I do have to mention that on my eyes, I want you to know that blended through the crease, I did have to go back through with a few Makeup Geek products, with some other empty brushes, and really blend out. So what I ended up with, the like finished result, is pretty good, but it's not just these products so i want to like throw that out there okay moving on we have the work it kit and this again it's the same situation with the highlight being super intense but chunky like look at that it's just if you could see the crumbles up close this would be better as an eyeshadow the blush in here same story super i barely swatched that super intense and just it might give you a hard time blending all right, the colors in here are actually really pretty, but they remind me of the Morphe shadows where you could get like a whole big, huge palette of metallic eyeshadows for like the same price or close to the same price as this whole palette where I'm not really liking the face products. So, you know, you guys can decide for yourself if these seem like items that you're really into. The metallic shades can be very wearable and fun for your eyes. The face products don't like. The matte eyeshadows, not my favorite. And because of that, I personally would say this is a pass, but you know, maybe you like it. I'm trying to give some redemption here because I feel like I am just kicking the crap out of this entire line. So let's continue with that theme because I don't like the lipsticks either. Now, the reason that I don't like these lipsticks, they're streaky, patchy, and they smell horrible. Not just smell horrible, like up to your nose in the tube, that smells like nothing, but when you put it on, it smells like an expired lipstick. It does not smell right. It just has a very chemical type of an essence to it that you can taste and you feel like you are just swallowing nasty chemicals. Now, I am wearing a few mixed together right now. I am wearing uh, by Felicia and Goals, and you can make them look nice, but when you initially put this on, it is very slick. You almost have to wait for it to kind of dry down a bit. They all have a sheen to them. None of these are completely matte, but they do end up kind of drying down a little bit more matte than some lipsticks that I own. Um, but again, this is just not my favorite. I prefer Maybelline lipsticks. I prefer Wet n Wild matte lipsticks. These are just not my favorite. So I'm gonna say they are a pass. So this was the most ridiculous review ever. I am so sorry. My intentions when I purchased these were to find something that I could actually really get behind and love with the Kardashians because I didn't buy the stuff going, yeah, I hope it sucks. Obviously I paid my own money for it. All right, that is it. I'm sending you guys love and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Mwah.